You are entering a Maple Story 8 bit podcast zone. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Activate. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you there. This is Maple Story Killed 8 bit Radio, episode 4. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Uh, things that include dual blades, of course. Uh, rollbacks, um, compensation, stuff like that. But first, let's introduce ourselves. I have time to choose level 157 Aaron in the Guild 8-Bit. 8-Bit for life, represent. And uh, these guys will introduce themselves now. My name is Mike. My IGN is 2Infinity. I'm in the Guild 32-Bit part of the 8-Bit family. Um, well, hello. My name is Cardio Lift, real life name Ali. Um, I am level 120 in the guild 8 bit. I am a bowmaster. My name is Landon. My IGN is Mass Scourge in Cradia. I'm in the guild 16 bit in the 8 bit family. Alright. I'm also a level. Well, what level are you? 151, Aaron. <laughs> well. Uh, before this, we failed at our uh, attempts at introducing ourselves, so that is actually our second attempt, just to let you guys know. So we will start this podcast off with One Week in Maple, and this week, all I did was scroll some stuff, which I'll talk about later in the podcast, and uh, I'm pretty much just anticipating Dual Blades and for uh, Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever. Yeah, me too. Disappointing that it wasn't last Wednesday, but whatever. Um, yeah, I've been actually doing quite a lot this week in April. You guys haven't seen it because I've been playing RuneScape, but um, I've actually been leveling my Aaron. I got him from level 71 to 79 on Thursday. Um, yeah, I've been scrolling some stuff, and I just took a break. I, I took a couple of days kind of break from merchant I don't think I'm gonna go back because of the rollback and all of that. I just kind of bothered me up quite a bit. And the compensation just wasn't enough. We'll go back we'll go into that later. Yeah, Landon, what did you do this week? I logged in once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> well me I just kind of Kicked it. I'm trying to waste time. Got my Ravnia helm. So that's kind of good news for me. Yeah, you got it on the second time that we went in there. That's not bad. Yeah. Oh well, so that's pretty much my week. We, I guess we're all very productive this week. <laughs> um, I think the, uh, the rollbacks and everything kind of dragged everyone down out of the Maple Story uh, scene there. Everyone kind of stopped playing and is pissed off. So let's talk about that. Well, um, if anybody doesn't know, the rollback, hap- uh, rollback happened from July 14th back to July 11th because of a MISO exploit. So there was like billions and billions of MISO that was introduced into the game. And their solution for that was to roll back not just the people that had the miso, but they decided to roll back every single player, including legitimate players. Um, no, uh, they only uh, roll back players that were logged in from July 11th to July 4th, uh, 13th. But they gave some, some compensations. I'm pretty sure they roll back everybody, because that's what it says on their website. Yeah. So how do you guys feel about that? Have we have it has it affected you or anything? It kind of worked out for me positively because I failed a crap load of scrolls and I kind of got a second chance to do it all. So it worked out in my favor, and I was just lazy that week, so I didn't train. So that's kind of how it works. I was yeah. lucky because like the once or twice, once or twice uh, times that I logged in. I, it was, was in between that time, so I got 5k and x free. Yeah, same with 
me and it's pretty much a good good news for me as well because me trying to get preparation for the dual blades. Uh I gotta get a second chance on buying the equips I wanted in MTS. So those are back up immediately and uh, first pick. <laughs> yeah, that's uh you get the first deal on all the really cheap stuff. That's what I did right when I logged on. I went into the MTS. Well, unlike you guys, I was pretty unlucky with it. Um, I know people that have lost hunt like, cut like twenty, thirty levels, and s stuff like that. Um, I actually lost quite a bit of legitimate miso. I got really lucky with stuff. I got say a chaos girl. I got it for twenty mil, and that was with legitimate miso, and um, it got rolled back and just everything that I kind of lost about 300 mil worth of scrolls and stuff like that of profit you can say and yeah yeah but was, you didn't actually lose your money because you got it back right well what happened no, was I that uh, your, your, your miso got rolled back to July 11th but if you had miso that was introduced into the game from the glitch then that was taken out of the game completely so if you someone bought something from your store with that illegitimate miso then it was removed from the game, so some people did lose Miso. Um, no, they actually rolled it back, so nobody actually lost any Miso. It's just that the profit, because the uh, actual exploit came out on the 13th, and I quite I made quite a bit of Miso from the 11th to the end of the 12th, but of profit you can say, right? And, and I sold lots of stuff. I I was pretty much rolling. I had a good 700 mil. And then when I logged back in, I had 400 mil. Like, and then I had 700 mil, say, and then the miso exploit came out, so I, I just tried to make as much profit as I could from that. And um, really, what happened is it kind of got rolled back, so I had only 400 mil that I started with on the 11th. But I had 700 mil on the 12th, you can say. Yeah. Well, let me just clear up a few things for people who are, are, uh, don't know all the facts and I'll lay them out on the table um, the exploit uh, unfortunately for you Ali was not released on the 13th that's when it was detected the actual exploit has been out for a couple weeks before then and uh, there's still players oh. in the game that have the uh, the uh, dirty money because they only rolled back to the 11th so people who did it before then um, still have that miso. Je Jesse, actually, there have been two miso exploits. One, I'm not sure the exact date, but they had an emergency server che uh, check, and it based they didn't actually get rolled back, these players. These players actually lost all their Yeah, there miso was one from the metal guy, that I forget his name, but he gives you medals, uh, the um, donation guy, and then yeah. there's a leafy one, too. Yeah, his name is Del uh, Dallaire. Dallaire. And basically, um, no, it actually came out on the 13th. I am kind of up to date with all the forums and stuff like that, so I, I kind of know when stuff comes out. And basically, I saw the website. I didn't actually do the miso hack because I didn't really want to get banned. Because I, I don't really want to waste four years of me playing Maple Story, and I can't really make another account because I live in Europe. Um, yeah, so basically, the people that got the one with the donation box, you they you enter minus uh, two point one billion miso, and you kind of get it in plus miso. If you get me, and you can buy anything you want. You can just sell it in an X. But these players got these players that actually obtained the illegitimate miso, they got kind of hell banned, you can say, and um, basically it disabled them to trade, do anything, basically, and yeah. But then, like, they lifted the hell band after they removed the illegitimate Miso from their account. And they basically, people, see these people, these merchants, they kind of lost so much money from it. Yeah, there's then, all like, those Miso selling out. sites have, uh, there's, like, notices on the website saying that they lost billions and billions of dollars because these people yeah. got the Miso and then sold it for actual money. Yeah. And, like, um, it's, and then, uh, this one, it, this the one that, then the second one, the second miso exploit is basically get an etc item from 
leafy and uh, it basically duplicates it. You have yeah, you can't have anything in your inventory except one of those uh, fluff balls or something like that. I, I don't really know what they're called. They're yellow fluff balls, and it basically duplicates them. Substitute an NPC, re rinse and repeat. You gain about a billion per hour. I saw this video of this guy fast forwarding it. Um, yeah, a bill an hour, and they basically just after they have max miso, they go into the FM buy all the stores out for even if they're overpriced or anything and other games actually collapsed and closed from this from these kind of exploits from money hacks see and that's something yeah. I want to talk uh, about I forgot their name. is because uh, something I don't know if you guys agree with me but something like this is just sloppy lazy programming it should not be like possible in a big huge game like Maple Story that's like has millions of players but I guess at least they were quick to respond on it, and they didn't leave it. And they, they I think Nexon actually cares about the game, but the people that actually programmed the game are was that Nexon just uh, uh, just distributes the game, kind of. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of like a franchise. Markets. Yeah. So every all their blame, all the blame gets on Nexon, but really it's was that was that still works with Nexon. Yeah, they're still making all the content, and then just Nexon just publishes yeah. it. So don't blame. <laughs> yeah, don't blame Nexon, Nexon for <laughs> blame not making that. content. Yeah, it's always it. That's kind of lackluster on the content. What are your guy, Mike Alley, or sorry, Mike Landon? What are your uh, thoughts on the whole lazy programming thing? Do you think that it shouldn't have happened at all, or what? I think that it's not Nexon fault. Everybody's like. Oh, Nixon, they ruined my fucking life because they can't fucking make the game work. It's not their fault. It's the hackers that are purposely going in and making these exploits. And Nixon is just trying their best to fix it. I lost my girlfriend. It's Nixon's fault. Yeah. You know what? I'm surprised it took this long for someone to realize that they can do this. Yeah. I don't know. Well, they should have been expecting it sooner or later if knew something like that could have happened, but at least they took care of it when they first detected it and didn't wait for so long, so they were on top of things, which means that can take out the factor that they just sit around kicking back all day. They must be doing something there. Yeah, they're, they're making those shitty plushies. That's what they're doing. No, I think they're also my one one. They should, like, have a Maple Store. And that you can buy like maple story gear from it. I don't know. Well, I guess their stuff looks we'll pretty We'll talk crappy. about that later. Um, well, let um, I'll just list off uh, what compensation that everybody gets from this. Um, and this is right off the website. Cash item extension. So if you had cash stuff, it will be extended. I guess I don't know for how long. Two days, maybe a week. Um, every player that logged in between. July 11th and July 13th gets 5,000 maple points, which is okay, but you can't trade it or gift it or anything. Uh, the Golden Temple has been extended for one week, and the Golden Temple tickets will also be available. Uh, you get like double tickets with the packages, and they're 30% off. The Vegas Scroll was extended a week. The One A Day Sale was extended a week. The Explorer Ring event has been uh, kind of extended slash rescheduled to July 21st to the 27th, so you'll have another week to do that. And uh, two t a lot of two times XP and two times drop on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday both have 12 hours of two times. So that's uh, that's good for people who lost the levels, I guess, but it still doesn't make up for the you know millions of missing miso. And yeah, that's a compensation. Do you guys think that's good compensation for something like this? It's better than no compensation. To tell you the truth, I was expecting nothing from Nexon. I thought that they were just going to roll back and that's it, like they do with everything. They, uh, But they actually gave 5k maple points, which is pretty good, I guess. I spent it on four times. I think it's kind of a nice save, like they, the game fucks up and they have to fix it, so... Oh, let's just make it a event <laughs> out of the fuck up. <laughs> You're kind right. of creative. 
But yeah, I think we should get more reimbursement than that. It's a little stingy for such a big thing. Like, make you yeah, I agree. dual blades like a full fucking week. I have to relive oh, the worst yeah. week of my life again. Same. Oh man, I, I was so angry that dual blades didn't come out by, like on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, that's that. We'll talk about that right now. Um, I think it's a good call on Nexon's part, considering that uh, there would be all this like the be imbalance for the players that have all this godly stuff that they bought with this dirty miso. And I mean, you're right, Lannan. It is reliving the worst week of my life, and it's like deja vu all over again. But you know, only a couple more days, and then we can actually have the podcast that was supposed to be this one, which was our reviews of of Dual Blades. So that will be in the next one. Yeah, man. Um, oh, uh, I'm just kind of well. I think they should have put it on Saturday. Like, who cares that they always have patches on Wednesday? Just put it on Saturday, just for the players or something. But I guess it's alright for me because I'm going on vacation and I basically come back on the 21st. So m that means next patch will be on the 21st, meaning I will be right on time for the patch. Yeah, but if they have it on a weekend, you know they have to pay their employees overtime. True. <laughs> Landon, Mike, what do you <laughs> think of the extension? It. Oh, sorry. It has its pros and cons. Like, it's making us relive this boring week again. I'm not motivated to do anything because we're just waiting around. And, but again, like the economy, stability, and such, like, does take care of it. So it's not like unfair to those unlegit players and us legit players. So that's my thought. It's like if my life were Mortal Kombat and Nexon was my enemy, Freeze, and pushing back or pushing forward dual blades is the fatality. It just shattered my life. <laughs> That's a good metaphor. Uh, so are you guys like going to quest your dual blader or grind him or party quests? Or how are you guys going to level him or her? Well, mine's going to be a male and a female. That's what I'm rocking. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to be grinding. Um, I'm going to try and like stay the same level as my buddies. But I'm going to be grinding, and I'm going to be questing and party questing. I want this character to be absolutely perfect, so I want all the quests done. And, uh, yeah. You know, that's what you said about your Aaron and pretty much all your other characters. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's you what I say. <laughs> ever do it. Every time I go to a new character, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking finish all the quests. It's gonna be so badass. I'm gonna have the quest specialist medal. And then, like, 50 quests since I'm like, fuck this. This is too much work. Too long. Yeah, too long. Not good enough rewards for most of the quests. Mike, how are you training your dual blade? Um, I think I'm going to level level it up to like a stable level and then take a little break and get a chunk of quests done and such and then go back to leveling you know just get a stable level from there just like have these points but I don't know we shall see yeah you know we should all do the temple of time quest together so we can knock that shit off quick um well I probably will be on holiday for three weeks. Oh. I have to go outside, man. This is gonna like, kill. And I can't like dish my friends, so say, oh, I want your internet and like just so, leave me alone. So anyway, about the like Temple of Time quests, we should like just join up and t knock those out because three dual blades or three dual bladers or such, whoever else, that would like take care of it so fast. Yeah, especially with that ultimate. Yeah, I agree. Like three dual blades just ripping off, ripping it up, and like one uh, tentable match, the quest would go back so fast. When do you guys think you're gonna be level 120 on your dual blader? Within the first week, within like the first month, or are well, you gonna try to get first level 200? I won't. I'm not gonna rush to get like into the rankings or anything like that. But I will be 120 within the first month. That's guaranteed. But you know, it all depends on my work schedule but uh... whenever i'm not working i will be playing maple story 
Yeah. Are you going to stay up late? Or are you just going to go to bed early? <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, it's bad to say this, but I'm probably going to be staying up like a little bit extra late every day to play my blader. <laughs> well, uh, me, I am going to kind of rush him. I don't care. Because I want to come back and I don't want to be the level 30. Well, it won't be level 30. It doesn't take a week to get level 30. But like level 70, kind of do a blader. And you, you guys are all going to be at 120. I want to be kind of at least higher up, I, I guess. So I don't have to catch up as much. So I'll probably be staying up late on four times, two times, whatever. Whatever I can get, pretty much. Yeah, do you think that we can use those character card things once two blades are out? No, because no. that's for just adventure. Oh, okay. And dual blades are adventures, but they have their own selection screen. Yeah, they kind of got... I mean, they say they're adventurer slash explorer, but they're kind of gypped from a lot of the explorer stuff. Yeah. Oh, but um, I, next one's giving us a hint. Um, I'm not sure if it was on Facebook, but basically they said that they will be changing um, uh, Crimson with Keep, like PQ, and so you, I think you can get them on on your dual blader later. That would be later nice. Because they, they will be changing the scripts and everything for to allow dual bladers in some other classes. Well, we can all do that and, like, pull those fucking things. I've seen pages of them, and, you know, every time it teases me, I just want to do it so bad. Uh, I want to take this uh, chance here to talk to everybody on the radio. If you're in Maple Story, you know, ask us a question about what we're talking about, and we'll answer it, unless it's really stupid. And, uh... Or, like, leave us a review on iTunes. Yeah, we are on iTunes. Just search Maple Story in iTunes and our podcast will show up. Rate, review, and subscribe. Yeah, man. Like, um, seriously, if you want to ask us a question, just do it on iTunes. We'll answer it. We always love iTunes reviews. Yeah, we need more. Mike and Landon should subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Just download it and then subscribe. We should just, like, make... A whole bunch of accounts just rating it tens like five stars. And yeah, and then we'll take the podcast off iTunes. <laughs> Perhaps. Or how about everybody in the guild of the End Alliance um, go on iTunes and rate us five stars? Yeah, everyone listening on the radio and from the podcast website, go on iTunes and do all of that, and we will appreciate and we will touch you in your pants. Yeah, but nobody's going to be listening. I don't think anybody is anyway. Aren't well, they? you know, that's not good to say about your own podcast. We do have listeners. Okay, so Debbie if there are any listeners, just say, um... Jesse likes RuneScape. Alright. That was random. So, tonight, I am going to... I haven't t told Mike about this yet, but he's going to GPQ with me tonight. And so is Landon. And Ali, if he wants to. Oh, yay. Yay. I'm down. Yeah, you don't have a choice, Mike. Yeah, I know. I'm just kind of the puppet in the guild. <laughs> Whatever, man, you're running 32 bit. I don't think that's a puppet. No, I know. Don't worry. I know. I feel love. Don't worry. Yeah, we all love, love the guild. Vanessa loves you. Yeah, a little bit too much. Oh, uh, speaking of guildmates, um, I said that I would shout out to everyone who came on a Z run with us yesterday or two days, two nights ago. Uh, me and Mike <laughs> did a lot of people's pre quests, including the jump quest, and we got like 200 gold teeth. And uh, you know, the fail was generally the run was generally a huge fail. But you know, shout out to everyone that came with us. <laughs> it was still fun. It was it was a very long night. That's all I can say. <sighs> yeah, I rocked like two hours of sleep and then went to work. Yeah, it was quite irritating, but well worth it. Yeah, at least we know who has the prequest done now. For sure. Is there any uh, other Maple News that you guys want to mention? Yes. All right, go ahead. Um, on Spaddle's blog. Yeah, <laughs> we should have a special like Spaddles blog a minute or something about. Like, All right, guys, this is 
this section is Spaddle's blog minute, I guess. <laughs> Spaddle's blog minute. All right, line and go. Okay, so on Spaddle's blog today, Battle Mages got a new skill called Thunder Spear. It looks kind of interesting. And KMS defeated Pink Bean after the Big Bang patch. And also, they got the maps for the resistance classes, including Mechanic, which, by the way, is not a legend, but it is part of the pirate branch. And is it like resistance pirate, or what yes, is it is just a special thing? Okay. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Jinx. Whoa, that's weird. Oh, guys, by the way, um, resistance, that, like, you know how... Uh, behind adventures, they have this mushroom, and then behind, um, like each kind of class, it has its well, each kind of, kind of race, it has its own thing in the background when you log in. Um, resistance, it has a, a kind of a gear, kind of mechanic. -y. Oh, so they're probably included in that new world or that new map that they've added in KMS. Yeah, man, they extended Maple World, it's pretty huge now. I think they're going to add. Big Island, um, for where they added resistance. Yes, in a matter of fact, the new town, two new towns for the resistance. One is Eldestine, and it's pretty mechanic -y looking, and the other one is Leben Mine. And when you create a resistance character, there's like a mechanical building around the character, so really gears and steampunk style. And they also added a new world map for that area. I'm so psyched out to uh, play this class. Man, as soon as I looked at them, I wanted to play them. Yeah, see, I'm not uh, really that excited for Resistance. What about you, Mike? No, I'm not I'm not too excited at all. I'm just really hopefully going to keep with Dual Blades for a while and possibly in the future. We'll see. Level 200 Dual Blades. Yes, sir. I can't the only say part of resistance class. that I'm excited about is mechanic. I'm uh, I just checked out Spaddle's blog and I see the Thunder Spear, and uh, it kind of looks like Chains of Health, like the the end of the spear looks like the Chains of Health thing. Oh yeah, it does. But yeah, that's cool. Guys, I actually want to make a battle mage. I'm so sick of for this, but all kind of mages get to 200 pretty quickly, and they're not considered like pro or whatever. Um, Code Magic, Code Magic 95. Uh, let's explain to him what resistance is. Uh, Landon, why don't you explain it to him? Resistance is a group like adventurers or Cygnus knights of new jobs that are coming to KMS and they include as far as we know right now mechanic job battle mage job and wild hunter job yeah and they're not gonna don't worry they're not coming in to uh... GMS anytime soon like they've just been introduced into the, the test server so it's being tested right or is it actually in KMS? uh... no it's still in testing yes. for now and as soon as the Big Bang finishes up in the real KMS then Resistant comes because it's part of Big Bang yeah I think it's like the third patch or something I'm interested, or second I'm interested to see what's in the other patches I'm interested in seeing the Black Magician develop yeah man, like Maple Street had no storyline until when? until like a year ago when Cygnus Nights came out I actually had a question for one of you guys to answer is why would after the Big Bang patch now just people being able to kill Pink Bean why would that have an effect in turn? Oh, um, they get a boost man their attack, their, the, all the formulas are changing um, strength will give more attack, like everything is changing so mages will need into, uh, they will need luck to uh, actually hit the monster. If they don't have luck, then they'll keep on missing the monster. That's why you see um, level 
160 bishops quitting and selling all their stuff because they're luckless and basically all the luckless um, bishops and everything they will either need to re or any mage that's luckless will need to either level up like crazy to get their luck up or they will need to do an SP reset and they are not giving that free they're only give like they won't get an AP reset they only, they're only giving out an a SP reset I've seen a bunch of people concerned about HP washing and the Big Bang patch. Like, is the HP washing still going to be uh, like a feasible thing to do with Big Bang? I don't think so. I think Nexon actually realized that people are HP washing, and that's. I think they are going to. It's not going to be recommended to HP wash, actually. I think that they're making it so it's more free to play and not having to HP wash. If anybody doesn't the know what kind of HP boss. washing is, it's basically taking your one of your AP points that you would normally put on strength or something, and you put it into HP, and then you get an AP reset, and you take it out of MP, and then put it back to one of your main stats. That's basically what HP washing is, and it gets very expensive. But um, right now in GMS, anyways, it's super useful for like errands and bow match. I don't think bow matches can AP HP wash that much, but it's possible. Yep, just a lot of money. Yeah, one AP reset is like 2,400, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, somewhere up there. Very expensive, and is it really worth it just to kill one boss that you would probably kill? Yeah, I mean, the game gives you all the skills necessary to defeat it, and you know, these things are called party quests, so I mean, I know people like to solo and everything, but the game <laughs> is like designed to bring people with you to heal you and buff you and shit like that. Um, well, if people actually realize that party quests don't give up that much experience compared to grinding, then I'm sure people wouldn't actually PQ, because grinding is actually a lot faster. Yeah, I mean more like, uh, because Zackham and Horntail and stuff are classified as PQs. Oh yeah, yeah I, mean, I think they're classified as expeditions now. What were you saying, Mike? I'm just gonna say, like training wise and like PQ wise, it depends on the skill and like the knowledge of the player as well. Because I know I always used to depend on like KPQ and that was the best. But once I got more information about like what monsters do what and where to train, and, like yeah, then I moved to grinding. So just a matter of time. Going back to what Ali said about how grinding is better than PQs. Yeah, but it's unfortunate not everyone has that uh, that beta player pro on their buddy list. No, not every noob has that. Yeah, yeah I guess like, like every. Sorry. Oh, uh, I was just I was just saying like neither did I and like at first and then. You just learn as you play. It's not going to be like right there. So, if that made any sense, I'm not sure if it did or not. Yeah, huh? it does. Well, I guess um, the people, the reason that people like say CPQ is because it gives a whole bunch of experience if you win at the end. That's why you see your experience bar kind of shoot up. But um, grinding, it gives little by little. It's kind of like saying, do you want um, form like four months of $2,500 or do you want do you want uh, say $8,000 right now yeah you can always do my trick where you just cover up the EXP bar yeah I do that with my map or my quest helper and it just kind of surprises me and it feels good yeah I guess wow. you say feels good man you know we're seeing a lot of more uh Playstyles coming into like with, uh, most notably, Aaron's being introduced into the game with the whole combos and you know having to train up for your combo and trying to keep your combo. The games they're adding like uh, where you have to know how to play your character instead of just going in into a map and just like one skill or whatever and killing. Yeah. Like even um, bishops now they actually they're people are saying that. Bishops will actually be really bad, and everybody's gonna quit their bishop, but they're actually really good. 
and even though they have a genesis cooldown they have other skills that they actually need to use instead of just spamming one button constantly and um, yeah I think with the new interface I think the actually seeing your int, uh, experience progress is going to be a lot better because you actually like see it move up little by little instead of just seeing one little pixel move up once um, once yeah. an hour. You know what's going to happen though is is the players that all are have already been play, playing Maple Sword for five years, they're not going to like it because, you know, n not everybody likes change. But the new players coming into Maple Story, like all this is it's going to seem normal to them, so they're not going to have a problem with it at all. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, how did it take you a year, two years to get to 120? It only takes me like two months now. Yeah. But then you explain to them that, oh, they decreased how much experience you actually need to level up by 80%. You know what that means, though? It means all newbies are actually fucking noobs because they don't have to like work as hard or have. Yeah, to. man. Like they'll get to 120 with no kind of. They don't need any like skill or anything. They'll just sit down in front of the computer for an hour a day, and in a month or two they'll get to 120. Yeah, Mike. Uh, how did you feel when you got to 120? Um, along with terms, when I found out the news that the XP ch change was, the XP curve was going to change, like, drastically, or... I mean, like, you got to 120, right? And you were like, fuck yeah, I got to 120. You you worked hard to get to 120. Oh, yeah, I was ecstatic. I was like, thank God, the hardest part of the Corsair career is over. Got to 120 successfully, and just, you know, is fantastic. <laughs> it was like a relief and then now uh, it's like started to boss I guess you can say even though I'm not that successful at it. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah man, same with me. Um, when I got to 120 I was like wow this is awesome. It, but although it still takes me the same amount, to level, the same amount of time to level up, I get like new skills, hurricane and everything and you actually like this. You kind of worked up to get the skills and you kind of it's like an achievement, and um, yeah, when I hit 120, uh, kind of every, the whole world changed for me. I really wanted to get that mount, the uh, silver mane, and I finally got it, and I was like, yeah, can't stop riding it. Oh, I don't even have my first hog. <laughs> Recoil shot, <laughs> FTW. Yeah, you know, the first hog is actually kind of hard to get with those fucking aliens, piss me off. Yeah, man, but um, thingy, I was going to say something. Yeah, but like, don't. Sometimes it's kind of ridiculous that it takes you eight hours, like for me. And I'm training efficiently. I do everything right. Eight hours to level up. That killed me, man. That was so bad. Yeah, you know, we gotta start training together. Every, all of us, like even uh, our guildmates. I mean, you train with a partner. Like A, it's less boring. Uh, B, you have like someone to train with, and C. Uh, it can, depending on where you go, it can be faster training. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what like a lot of partner. people don't realize that training with a party or just one other person can be like a fuck ton faster and it can be a lot funner, especially if you're on Ventrilo. Yeah. The 8 bit Ventrilo. Yeah, like, um, say, instead of getting 12% an hour, you get 14, 15. Makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, it, like, 2% doesn't sound much, but. Uh, it really like adds up. Yeah, in the higher levels, definitely. Oh yeah, I mean dying, like dying at my level 157 it is so painful, and sometimes you can see a tear come down from my eye. Dude, if when I die at level 150, I seriously just like punch my keyboard. I just say fuck it, quit Maple Story for a day. That resembles a true player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rage quit. Yeah, rage quit. QQ. Uh, do you guys know what QQ is from? World of Warcraft. I do. <laughs> yeah, it's from World of Warcraft. You press what is it? Alt QQ, and it closes the game completely. <laughs> yeah, man. And um, yeah, there's like this one guild in the server I play in. More less pew, less QQ, more pew pew. <laughs> What's pew pew? Like lasers? Yeah, pew pew? Like, yeah, kind of like shooting lasers. Um, 
All right, Mike, do you have uh, any news that you want to bring up here? Um, not necessarily, just, uh, you guys are kind of my news, so. Yeah. I, I'm just, wait, so, I'm kind of confused, so, Chaos Horntail and Chaos Zackum are coming out with the dual blade patch, so those also got pushed back to the 21st, or, yeah, and the follow new follow system which is useless. I don't even know why it was invented. You can only follow people in one map. That's kind of pointless. I just want to know if you can use it in a jump quest, because then it would actually give a little bit of meaning to the actual follow system. Sel well, it would be bad quest. Uh. Yeah, Selden Zack and jump quest. Uh, hold on, guys. Code Madge wants us to say Angel. So, Angel. 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 Nice. <laughs> okay. What? Where? Oh yeah, selling jump quest. If you can f do that, you know, that could actually make you some money. Like I could see that being a new thing in Maple Story. Yeah, but I won't because yeah. um, you know, like in some jump quests, you know, have like those lasers, something like that, go up and down, or something comes like a uh, throwing star comes like flying by, and you have to dodge it. The lag between you, because the guy will be behind you, and he'll get hit. Or he or she he'll fall down and then you'll be like oh repeat yeah then they'll want their money and back they'll be just yeah they'll be following you they won't be actually doing all your stuff and if you like put, if you put a buff on then or like go to another um room then it will just like you'll have to click follow again and then you have to accept it again and just I don't get why you have to accept somebody following you because that could piss off a lot of players yeah, but come on, they can just, the people can just follow you if, without you even asking them. I can just, I'm following this one guy right now. Yeah, and if, that could probably be another, I hope they, like, make that legit, like, no bugs in it, so people don't find a way to use the follow system. If a window pops up on the maple screen, then people can use that for DC hacking. Such as X Love Hero and all of his guild DCing us and finding any way to do it. Yeah, but X Love Hero, you know, he got banned, right? Yeah, but he still has his mules. Thank God um, he's banned, though. I hate him. I hate I West I. I hate all of Regulate. Yeah, let's publicly say that we are against everything that Regulate stands for. What do they do? Fill me in. You don't know what they do? They think they no, no, own Cradia. No, man, they we think own, they own Cradia. No, no, no. Don't Cradia. say that, man. We're not conceited like Regulate is in that low. No, no, man. I like Bad We are lovers of Cradia. Yeah, what else do they. What else does Regulate do, Mike? They, uh, KS. They think they're the best. They, uh,. DC all the time. They think they can tell you off, and they just think they're the best, and think they can get it away with anything. They uh, DC MWLBs. They uh, do everything that isn't supposed to happen, and they think it's okay. Sounds like might have a guild. <laughs> no, don't that say that. Is the kind of can. You guys here might not. Uh, Lani, that, that's a good point. They kind of can do it because a lot of important issues haven't been uh, addressed by Nexon yet. Like DCing. That's, yeah. That's a huge problem. It's been a huge problem for a while now. Man, I'm so tired of it. People get DC'd all the time, and there's like no point of it. Can't they just fix it? Isn't it? Is there like some way that you can fix it? Well, they did fix a Whisper one, but now they're doing Spouse. And uh, like Mike mentioned, yeah, they will be able to DC with the follow system pop-up thing, like I can see it now. Yeah, um, unless you can uh, decline. Well, you, can. you could probably block it yeah, in the settings. That, it's yeah, we'll in the game see, options, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're making an option to disable it, like pretty much everything else. Yeah, I got DC'd by a spouse when I had an FM1 dark spot. I was like, what? <laughs> That's why you get a mushroom house, man. 
Yeah, well, not everybody can afford a mushroom house. Yeah, that's true. Um, let's move on to a segment that I will be calling Equipment Ego. And this segment will just be, we'll just quickly mention um, things that we may have scrolled or we may have bought and uh, the stats of that. And uh, I guess we'll start with Ali. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Because, you know, I'm, I love my damage. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, I bought this 13 dex um, yellow snowshoes for my dual blader, but then the rollback came and it deleted my stuff. So then um, I, today I scrolled my Candine level 70. It was 80 attack, it was 3 above average, and I was taking a risk. I just. I said, why not? 10% dagger for attack scroll. And it worked. 85 attack, and then I just, um, then I was with Jesse, and he told me to do another 10%, and it failed. Um, yeah, I thought it was going like to work. Say, yeah, man, I thought it was going to work too. I was like, ah! Oh. Um, I was like, oh, it could have been 90 attack, and like 5 slots left. It's alright, but then um, I scrolled it, uh, so basically it's plus 4 now. One ten percent and three sixty percent. So th three out of six sixty percent worked, and it's ninety one attack, three six luck. It's not that bad actually. It's That's not a bad dagger. Is that all that you uh, got this week? Oh um, yeah, I think I like last week or something like that. I'm not sure when. Um, I scrolled my dragon's tail ninety seven attack. With sixty percent, six out of seven, sixty percent, sixty percent's worked. Be happy about that. Yeah, and I bought some clean blue mystic shoes for my dual blader. So it has three decks. So I'm gonna scroll up with decks. Jump sixty percent scrolls later. Get some decks on it. Going low decks on the dual blades. Oh, I like it. Yeah, I have one more thing. Um, and I brought a Zakim chair from Love Sword Thirteen. 475 oh, he sold it to you? Oh, well, that's probably a good pricing, because Sag is a good guy. Yeah, man, he's a nice guy, man. Yeah, he, uh, what's it, man twice? That's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, I actually really like it. <laughs> it's like, my, it's for my dual blader. Uh, Landon, Mike, did you guys uh, acquire anything? Um, me? Uh,. I'm not much of a scroller. I just kind of save up and then went. So I got ten dex earrings and eight dex shoes with fourteen jump. So that's about it for me. Well, I'm gonna try. Like, I want to get both you and Landon some dex equips. Uh, it would be nice for us to all be stable. Landon, did you uh, get anything in free market this week? I guess you were kind of chillaxing. Actually, now that you mention it, I was uh, walking around Hennessy's. Some noob dropped some emerald emerald earrings that I picked up, and they were below average. And it was fucking awesome. Dude, so congrats. <laughs> God, that's funny. Yeah, I really want to work to get us good oh. equipment. Um, I'll talk about what I got quickly. Um, with that 5k annex making this also <laughs> yeah I mean it's decent equipment <laughs> uh, with that 5k maple points I bought Gachapon and I got a pink adventure cape 2 weapon attack and I decided to scroll it and I landed 4 percent so now it's 8 decks and I also got myself a uh, 21 dex bathrobe thank you thank you and uh, 10 dex earrings that I luckily got after like I got rolled back and I had to buy them again. Uh, what? Oh, yeah, ten dex, ten dex earrings. No, no. How much? How many miso? For the earrings. Yeah, and the robe. Uh, the earrings I got four hundred fifty, and then the bathrobe I got for well, I got it clean or not clean. I got it with sixteen dex for eighty mil, and then I landed a ten percent, and it boosted it up to 21. Wow. And then, nice. yeah, I also platinum scissor of Karma my Ravana. I scissored of Karma my Maple Gauge. This is all in pre preparation for dual blades. And that's my equipment. So that finishes off Equipment Ego. 
And uh anything you guys want to talk about right now? You I'm so envious of you guys. You guys are like, oh I spent 105 million miso <laughs> and I'm like sitting here with 34 mil just like oh fuck, I can't even buy pots. Yeah, like it's crazy. I'm just kind of depending on the extra NX I have right now with the nine mil misos I got left over. Huh. Yeah, well, I have no problem with uh, sharing my miso with you guys. And, you know, even to the guild. I mean, if you're a cool person in the guild and I actually, like, have seen you online and I know you're cool, then, you know, I have no problem with giving you miso. But don't expect, like, 50 mil from me. Mm. Why not? Can I have 50 mil? <laughs> no. Sorry. No, don't worry, I just, like, got 50k next. So I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, ready for do later. Yo guys, um, I don't know, something just popped up in my inventory that I didn't notice before. It was, uh, Gatchapon stamps, then they have a horntail head on them. I don't know where they came from. I have five of them. Um, Gatchapon tickets, if you buy Gatchapon, you get, uh, one Gatch stamp. And if you get 555 of those Gatch stamps, then you can get a horntail chair. And that is what those are for. <laughs> oh, fuck that. Yeah, you only need 555. Nothing. Basically, you have to spend $550 for a fucking chair. Um, not exactly. That's for shit. You can buy those Gatchapon stamps of people for a mil each, so it's yeah. 50 mil for the horntail chair. Yeah, that's okay if you buy them, but if you're spending the NX for that, you know, you might even make it back if you do Gatchapon, because you can, like, maybe if you get, like, four white schools in a row, but it's possible to make that back. Yeah, but, come on, <laughs> you can't actually make, um, kind of money back from spending money in the game. Y you already lose it as soon as you buy the NX. Well, you can sell your miso to a, a miso farming site. I guess you can. I hope How much did you like guys say money. these things are worth? The Gatchapon stamps are worth a mil each. That's it? Yeah, man. A mil each, come on. One million miso. Yeah, so a bunch of people have to spend NX for like one lucky person to get a horntail necklace. Sure. Oh, I've seen one guy in, um, Pretty out with it. So, random question: I don't know where it goes. Does anyone know, like, the special drop is of Pink Bean? Like, does it drop a special helmet? Uh, Pink Bean drops the Rock of Time that we that you use for timeless equipment. Oh yeah, that's right. Just but watching a video and I decided to ask. I was watching that video that Spado put on his website of uh, KMS. Yeah, beating it. And the drop rate was shitty, man. It dropped like not, not very many things. A few pots and a brought yeah. the time. And you know, there's like 200 people in the pink bean map. How, <laughs> you know, who's going to get that rock of time? I would expect that if you kill Pink Bean successfully, that the entire screen would just fucking fill up with fucking shit. You think it would have no, been and Yeah. Yeah, um, you get, you can, there's a drop of, like, Maple Warrior 30, if you're really lucky and you actually get it. <laughs> and it's worth, like, Max Miso, more, th more than Max Miso, I guess. And Bragging White Rights, I guess you... Can say, <laughs> yeah, you can say I kill pink get, bean. Do you get a like pink bean medal? Do you think? Yeah, like a bean? No, you get a monster card though. Yeah, well, that's shit. Nobody can see that. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, and again, one monster card. Who's gonna pick it up, right? That lucky person who's in the spot. Yeah. And considering, pet. yeah, con yeah, considering pink bean is like a very hard boss to beat. You think it would like just give everyone a, ro a rock of time in the inventory, like when you exit or some shit like that? That's how I think they should handle it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like, yeah. I was kind of surprised. But I guess they're going to be harder bosses than Pink Bean. Um, speaking of bosses, um, I want, I mean, we don't have this yet, but if you browse around Maple Wiki or something like that, then you'll, you'll have noticed that there's that one map, uh, and the boss, like, is the map, and it's like a tree thing. You guys have probably seen it, and you have to, like, jump around on its body and attack it. I want to fight that thing. Oh, yeah, yeah I think that before. looks sweet. Yeah, that's in, uh, U Ulu City, I believe. Yeah, we should get, we should really get that. But you know this, what this should be? This should be kind of a real raid, where you kind of go, you fight a boss, and then you go through a couple maps, perhaps jump quest, maybe, but not a, not a really hard one, just, and then, um, then you go fight another boss, kill some monsters, and along the way, and kind of mini bosses, and go fight another big boss, and kind of, kind of like a World of Warcraft kind of raiding style. That, that's really good. Trust me. Yeah, well, if you want raiding in a Nexon game, look no further than Vindictus. I've heard about that. It's like, what is it, Mabinogi 2 or something? No. Mm, no. Landon knows a bit about it. He'll explain it to you. I just want to say, though, first, that closed beta um, is open right now, so you guys should sign up and see if you can get in. Yeah, I was going to say, everybody who doesn't know, Vindictus is like Nexon's probably most gorgeous looking game first off and it has uh, physics, destructible environments and you can customize your own equipment so you can make it look shape it however you want and yeah sign up for beta now because I think it's going to be a good is one. This turn out, is this going to turn out... It's going to be sweet. It's going to turn out like APB. It, no, it's, it uses the Valve Source Engine which is found in Half-Life 2 Counter-Strike Source so it looks really nice, and the physics in source yeah, are very good. Dude, come on! Like APV is the uh, what Quake engine for? Wait, or, yeah, for that they use. In the Unreal Engine. Unreal, yeah, the Unreal Engine. Come on, and that's you can say pretty good. Yeah, it is not a good the way engine. they make it look. Yeah, I mean APV was just, you know, they packaged it nice, but you open the package and it's like a. Like a piece of dog shit covered in hair, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they give you the, like this gift box. It's all wrapped nice, <laughs> with, like sparkles on it, and a big red bow. And you open it, and it's just a big Cleveland steamer. <laughs> a Cleveland steamer? Yeah, it's just like a jack in the box, but it shoots like a bunch of shit in your face. <laughs> that could be messy. But yeah, Vindic Vindictus looks really good. I'm actually kind of excited for it. However, I will say that it's not um, going to replace Maple because Maple just has like a special spot in my heart. It's like a third arm or a second dick, you know? It's just part of my life. Yeah, who doesn't want a second dick? Yeah. Uh, I'd love one. Yeah, yo, dog. Kind of weird. I heard you like jerking off. So, here's two, <laughs> two, two dicks so you can jerk off while you jerk off. <laughs> I tried. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Vindictus. Yeah, I mean, you should watch a video because it, it's weird because um, the physics, uh, it's hard to explain. It's an MMO that has physics, destructible environments, okay? And you can, like, take your enemy's body and use it as a weapon. And <laughs> it, Dude, I read that. I, I know. And you, it kind of has platforming, platforming type things. So when you're going to, there are party quests. So when you go into a party quest, there's, like, blocks that are moving, so you kind of have to platform your way across to get to the boss, and it, yeah, it looks really good. You guys should check out the, the uh, trailer. Yeah, the trailer itself, it's really dark and fucking bloody, and it's like, yeah. it don't look like a Nexon game at all. It's a, uh, it's going to be a mature 18 plus game. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is like facts, but it's like the only MMO I know of that has destructible environments. And you can use them as weapons and stuff. Yeah, I played a lot of MMOs, like all the good ones to be played, and I haven't seen destructible environments. Liar. Well, I played. Um, you haven't played WoW. Okay, I've touched the seven-day subscription and got to login screen and then quit. Yeah, but that's the worst part of it. The, yeah. Like winter grasp, you can like kill. You can break buildings. You basically have to go into the other team's fortress and like PVP. You have to break down a whole bunch of buildings with like your cannons and stuff like that. Yeah, but and have you ever played it? 
he's talking about WoW. World of Warcraft. Have you ever played uh, Half Life Two or Counter Strike Source or something? I played Counter Strike, but not. Well, Half-Life. Counter Strike Source doesn't really show off the Source engine. If you play Half Life Two, you'll see all the destructible environments and the impressive physics, and you'll see that if they put that into an MMO, that it could just be absolutely insane. Like all the game review sites, like IGN and One Up and stuff, they said that it was a uh, one of the more exciting things that was presented at E3 this year. Yeah, man, I'm surprised that that's someone to E3. But um, also, uh, do you think like this is gonna be an 18 plus or is it, it already 18? It, it's yeah. already 18 plus. Oh, and also, um, is there gonna be like gear updates, or do you just like customize it and it's just like skill, or are there gonna be level ups and what is it actually gonna be? Is it gonna be just like one level all the time? Uh, I'm not sure if that's been. It's like closed beta right now, so uh, they haven't really released much information on it. For those who don't know what a source engine is or physics in a game, because you play MapleStory, uh, basically, like. <laughs> yeah, MapleStory doesn't have physics. The engine. <laughs> yeah, the engine that they use is called Havoc. You can probably Google that. But basically, metal will bend like metal, rocks will like break apart like rocks. And wood will like you splinter swim, like, you swim. if you like uh, break it and shit. And water like actually has physics and it drops and all kinds of stuff like that. So like instead of just walking in water like in Maple Story, you actually swim and you well you can swim in Maple Story Rock Road, but you actually swim with real physics and yeah. Yeah, and the water shines and there's waves. And also I read on the Vindictus website that uh their gameplay, or s- s- taking down a boss won't be like, won't be able to solo it. Like you're gonna have to work with the team like a lot, because apparently you have to like for certain bosses you're gonna have to like tie down their legs and then attack their belly, like and stuff like that. And only certain characters have certain skills to be able to do that. And hopefully they don't un- IP block it. Well, I don't think they will. I mean, they say it's a Korea game, but the testing is open to like worldwide. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, for the, the beta release. testing was only available for U.S. and Canada, so I think it's like an American game. Yo, Mike, Mine have you like heard anything? Back to Canada. Yeah, Mike, have you heard anything about Vindictus? Have you seen anything? Um, I haven't heard. Well, I haven't heard much about it, but I also have not researched it that much. I didn't even think you guys were that like pumped for it. You know, I wasn't really excited for it. But I watched a trailer and I was like, wow, this actually looks really cool. So I um my advice to you is to just watch a trailer and then see what you think. Yeah, I've seen the trailer and it looks awesome. I mean maybe it's because I'm nerdy and I know what to expect from the source engine. <laughs> That's why I'm excited about an MMO like this. APV. Uh yeah, APV really didn't even have physics and the physics that it did have was pretty shitty. Dude, I hate third-person shooting. Man, some guns are so overpowered, and how did you even upgrade the gun? It was so confusing. You had to, like, get organization points. Okay, so all I did was get back onto my car. Maple Story somehow. <laughs> oh, so RuneScape, guys, right? I bought a, wow, uh, bought a RuneScape membership, yeah. There should be another section that we should talk about, like a other games. Well, section. I just took it to uh, Vindictus because it's a Nexon game, so it's kind of related. Oh, have you guys played this like one Nexon Europe game? One second, I'll get it. Just talk for a second. All right, it's called Pantage, and basically it's like this little two-year-old game, and it has like your key characters. It's made for Europe, but it's ah uh, Nexon Europe. It's like. It's like in like a little kid MMORPG. Next in Europe is so far behind. Um, no, they just got Aaron. Yeah, that's well, pretty far yeah. behind. That's like us speaking with KMS. Speaking, yeah, I guess. Speaking testing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Lennon. Speaking of other games, uh, not related to Maple Story, fucking Lego MMO is coming out. I don't know when, but it looks fucking awesome. Yeah, it has a $30 subscription per month, though, so I won't be getting it. 
thirty dollars per month. Who's gonna play that? Um, probably you because you paid ten dollars a month to play WoW. It's ten pounds a month and it's twenty. No, it's <laughs> yeah, add RuneScape, man. Eight dollars. How much was that RuneScape subscription? Um, RuneScape is like five or six dollars, but I live in you. I live in England, so it's actually three pounds fifty. It's still way too much. For such a shitty fucking game. I won't even call well, it's it. It's like a game. five bucks, man. It's like what? Thirty yeah. minutes of working. That's like saying Habba Hotel is a game. Sorry. Okay, I used to play Habba Hotel, and then I got banned. That's like saying MSN is a game. It's like saying Facebook is a game. At least Facebook has games. Yeah, at World of Warcraft is a game too. <laughs> That's what I mean. It has a whole bunch of mini games, man. It's crazy. But not World of Warcraft. I mean, Escape. Uh, uh, Mike. Uh, while we're talking about other games, you know, I don't think you've said what other games that you play. Why don't you tell us? Um, lately, nothing really much, but uh, I have played RTSs with Landon in the past, and you, occasionally. Uh, I used to play Guns the Duel, I used to play Soul of the Ultimate Nation, uh, that was a pretty fun game, and but no, that's pretty much mainly, if I mainly I actually got into a game, those would probably be the only ones, honestly. Have you ever touched an FPS? What's an FPS again? Uh, first person shooter. Oh game. my god. Uh, like yeah. uh, Call of Duty and stuff um, like that? Yeah, so like, I have like, such as like Halo and such, but I don't care for them that much. That's not like... I could get a boner over when Modern Warfare 3 is coming out or something like that. I did. It's probably because you played Halo as your first FPS. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Halo ruined your FPS life. No, no, like, I used to play, like, Call of Duty, and, like, I have before. I don't know, it's just not, I'm not gonna go spend so much money on it. Well, yeah. I just like hop on over to a friend's house and use theirs. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Like that. So you're pretty much like a maple fag, like me and Landon. Exactly. And Ali. <laughs> and Ali. Ali, you're a bigger maple fag than me. Dude, I play like I all the games. Mike okay, is I don't a stick. RTS fag. Yeah. <laughs> he, I'm which shit. <laughs> dude, you enjoyed that staying up until like the sun came out. Like, man, that was fun. You guys kicked my ass though. Dude, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that staying up to like 7 a.m. Started at like 9 p.m. Playing fucking Rise of the Nations. Just like, um, and then we like tested ourselves. It was like, what, 5 versus 2? And we like stayed at like the gunpowder age. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so much fun. We should uh, be doing that while we wait for the DBs. Yeah, well, guys, um, I kind of just like sit there playing all the games. I'm sick with one game. I, I tested out almost every single MMORPG out there. Seriously, I highly played doubt everyone. That. I don't know. There's a lot. So not, oh, of fine. Dude, I seriously played so many. Well, all of the ones kind of heard of. Test me. Um, Fly FF. Oh, I've tried that out. I think a while ago. You think? Yeah, it's it's a 3D kind of like kind of Korean game. It's a 3D gay game, pretty much. Landon, uh, what were you gonna say? Uh, yeah, I was gonna do like an awesome segue. Um, MMOs and RTSs is this new one coming out called uh, fuck, I don't know something it's called of Nations. It's called fuck a eh? Starcraft two. <laughs> yeah, fuck a eh? Starcraft two. Starcraft two. Starcraft two. But yeah, it's like. M MMO and an RTS, fucking right. How about um, StarCraft Two, guys? Are you guys excited for that? Um, I played StarCraft, you know, and it's fun and everything. But I'm not like super excited for StarCraft Two. I'm more excited for Diablo Three. I'm more excited for Star Wars Online. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, and Mike, Dragon Ball Online. I want you to tell me what. Star Wars is about. Are you talking about Knights of the Republic Online or whatever that is? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The full name is Star Wars: The Old Republic. 
Yeah, not like that one looks like it'll be fun. Yeah, man, you can be like a bounty hunter and stuff like that. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, yeah you can be a be. clone, a bounty hunter, or like uh, a Sith or a Jedi or like something in between. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Dude, the Lego game looks so badass. Lego universe, and this you, is awesome. And you get like, and you get uh, your own ship. Like you get your own spaceship to fly around the universe, and you also get your own sidekick, like an R two D two and stuff. Man, I'm so yeah. gonna play this Lego game. Yeah, that Lego game you can like build your own shit and then use it. Guys, have you heard of Ion? Um, yeah, but let's not talk about that. Uh, <laughs> wow. I want to go back onto Maple Story. All right, what will happen? Oh, I don't know. Do you like hate Ion or something? <laughs> no, it's just that it's a Maple Story podcast. Okay, fine. we're off topic. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we pretty much talked about all the news in Maple Story this week. Pretty much, uh, the biggest thing was the rollback. Um, if you, you know, go on our forums. If you're not registered already, go ahead and do that. It only takes you know one minute maximum. And post in the podcast form. We'll make a thread there after the podcast about uh, dual blades and how it has affected your maple life, and uh, even if it affected your real life. Like if you went and broke a window because you were so pissed off. I like to see uh, people's reactions to that, and I want to see how they feel about that. We also have a poll up that you can vote in. Um, if you don't know what the website is, it's apiguild dot com. And it's a pretty badass website. We have Ventrilo up server information up there, so you can join us on Ventrilo and chat it up. We have a shout box, so you can just sh- shout it out. Yeah, we. Are, I also installed a chat room at the very top, beside the RSS feed and the Facebook and Twitter thing. Just click that, and it'll put you in a chat room. So if some of us are in it or whatever. Jesse. Yo. And while you're there, I saw some ads on your website. Uh, yes, I added a ad advertisement to the website to help pay for like uh, the Ventrilo server and the, the radio and the website server and everything. Yeah. 18 cents so far. Nice man. <laughs> like, what were you going to say while you're visiting, And while you're visiting the website, be sure to use my custom Maple Story um, emotions and uh, class emotions. That are very cool and it took very long, so you better fucking use them, assholes. <laughs> they look cool. And I made I made two new ones of Battle Mage and Wild Hunter that just is just to put on there. Yeah. Because he's a bitch. I'll add them soon. Um, hey Mike, do you wanna say anything good about the website? Say for example our um <laughs> uploading page <laughs> or <laughs> or something. What did you guys like do something to the upload page or something? No, I'm just I'm that? just saying that you have to put in a pimp for our website. Hey, Mike. Well, first off, what do you think of 8-Bit Radio? I love 8-Bit Radio. I tune in it and it's on. Online. Yeah, Jeez. well, it's uh, I've I've actually had it online a, a lot more than last time, but yeah, I need more music, more artists because Mike doesn't like metal, and that's pretty much all that plays. So we we have a th- <laughs> we have a thread on the forums about artists that you think I should add to the radio, and I've already added a bunch. Um, you guys can post on there again if you're not registered. Do go ahead and do so, and then you know, tell me what to purchase from the store, because I don't download at all. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You have to also buy the song and then upload it on the website, so then Jesse could uh, use it. Yes. Because Jesse doesn't download anything illegally. I don't even know what download means. What? How do you torrent? What? What's pirating? <laughs> you go and steal stuff? Like, does it include boats? On water? Do I need a flag? Do you need a pe- peg leg? Yar, mate, you need a pirate? Uh, pi- pi- uh, pirate talk is awesome, especially when you change your language on Facebook to pirate. It's pretty cool. You can have it to pirate. Yep. How, whoa. How does it like? What does it say? What's homepage? 
you can find that out on your own time. Yeah. Um, so, an hour and 18 minutes. That's pretty good. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, ADD, 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 ADD. What's up, Landon? Um, we could say it. We could probably answer these right now, but we could save it for our next podcast. But my question for you guys is, what do you think is coming for the future of Maple Story? Not just like GMS or KMS, but like the entire Maple World, or maybe be specific if you want to, but like further than the Resistance and the Big Bang, further than that. See how far you can think. Well, I think that now they've set in place balance for the classes w- via the Big Bang and the other patches, the balance patches. I think now we're going to see more content, i.e. bosses and high-level training areas. They've kind of laid the groundwork for th- the ability for high levels to train effectively. Any p- specific bosses that you think will be coming? Uh, I can't even say anything. Uh, yeah, we'll get to you in a sec, Ali. Um, bosses, I can't really say, because I'm thinking like things that we haven't even seen in KMS yet. So, bosses, we have Dragon there, we have Horntail, we have Zakum, so we... I mean, like, what else can they really add? It'll be, uh... New bosses, An right? actual... Um, huge boss? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Does KMS have Ulu City, or is that just, like, Taiwanese MS? I think it does. KMS is almost everything. Yeah. Mike, I'd like to see a boss that's the whole entire map. And not just, like... It's like Zachem is a part of, like, he's a big part of the map, but I'm talking about, like, the whole map. Maybe, like, maybe multiple maps, like, a player has to go two maps to the right to take out, like, uh, like, the boss's shield, life force, energy thing, and then when that's destroyed, the people in the main area of the map can then effectively, you know, damage him, so who knows. That'd be kind of cool. Or it's, like, more strategic, so say ranged DPS go in this area and melee DPS go in another area and like healers they heal in a certain area yeah that could be possibility too and you have to like change at a certain time uh so and Ali like random. what did what were you gonna say um well I think the there's gonna be more content seeing as uh, resistance added added a new island, like a, a small part of the new island, because I think it's gonna expand to bigger, more higher level training areas. Um, it's basically it's changing everything, so and more players for sure. Um, they they are, they need to update the cash shop resolution, and they need to change the cash shop interface. I'm sick and tired of that and trade. MTS. They need to update so many things, and so they're so behind, man. It's because of all these new games, all these like high 180p games. They should have like <laughs> 1920 by uh, 1080 resolution. What about you, Mike? What do you think is coming? I have a feeling that they're going to put higher content such as training places and such but that's all really I have in mind I think they need to back off of all of the new classes and focus on more content but whatever yeah I'd like to see a really elaborate new party quest no man I, I want some new classes I think new classes are good new players they not everybody wants to be an assassin. Uh, Not everybody wants to be a certain kind of like, because back in back in the day, you can only choose from what five, four different classes, right? And then they expanded, extended into pirates. So like, um, look, uh, Mike, uh, well, you yeah, like pirates? Well, yeah, like over in time. Well, yeah, yeah. But I guess it's pretty fast. You're doing this all at once and. It's not giving people time to, like... Yeah. Well, there comes a point where they just start recycling everything, right? Yeah, like, now balance rushes, it's it's kind of turning into, wow, I guess, like, with Cataclysm, is kind of like Big Bang, and then balance patches, they have balance patches in WoW, like, all the time. But I think WoW's patches are pretty good, but 
Maple, if Maple Street updates their content once a month to WoW's ex like WoW's kind of big kind of graphics, like big expansions, then I think Maple Street can be a pretty good game. And like max level 250 because now they're reducing the experience to level up. So yeah, Mike. Have like I mean, uh, when I talk about recycling stuff, I mean like uh, essentially, if you think about it. Right now, we're recycling stuff because every class has an ultimate. Every class has like a defense buff. Every class has a good attack. And it's kind of it's the same formula for every class. And with like resistance and stuff, all they're doing is changing the animations and they're changing the story up a bit. And it's there comes a point where like they'll be adding more classes, and it'll be the same. It'll be like the same as. Um, a wild hunter, but the color of the skills will be different, and then they're going to call that a new class. Exactly, but um, I think they're changing the gameplay, so you need to actually um, learn how to play a character, so you don't get power leveled or whatever. So you kind of learn over time as your character progresses, and I think that's what they're doing with you know how skills change colors every kind of ten levels or five levels or whatever, and like um. They're adding different animations for classes. They're kind of making it for the new generation of players. Not all the veterans want bad graphics. Yeah, maybe we can get um, into that in more detail in a future podcast. But I think for episode four, we should uh, cut it off now before it gets too long. Fine. <laughs> well, you know, we have to go on Maple and just talk to guildies speaking of guild um anybody who uh, wants to participate in the guild party quest that we will be doing after the podcast uh you're welcome to join you know we can try and teach you if you're on control it makes it a lot easier but this is concluding episode four of the maple story a big podcast you can catch us on itunes type into the search maple story and uh it'll show our podcast Rate, review, and subscribe it. I really want some reviews. I want to know what people think of this is a podcast. Um, you can also find the podcast at 8bitguild.com. We have an announcement on there after it's uh, edited and published and everything. If you're in game, listen to this. I mean, like, if you're not in the guild, uh, you can chat Time to Choose for 8bit. Mass Scourge for thirty or for six Mass Scourge for sixteen bit and two infinity for thirty two bit and uh, we can add you into the megabit alliance. How about Cradiolith? Uh well Cradiolith is a junior for eight bit, so you can message him if you want an eight bit. He's kind of a noob. <laughs> yeah, Cradiolith yeah, is a little bitch. Yeah. Everybody hates <laughs> him. Why doesn't he just like change his name? It's, it's just... Lith. What's Lith? What is Lyft? Did he think he was like cool by spelling lit Lyft because he thought it was like the way to spell life? I think that he just has very poor grammar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think Lyft, he really meant to say, um, I'm a gay fag, I think. Life. <laughs> no, I like Justin Bieber and I straighten my hair. <laughs> yeah, well. And I play RuneScape. Let's just leave it at that. We'll just end this podcast saying that Ali straightens his hair. And here's a subscription to Rune or RuneScape. And this is the time to choose. Say goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Avid Podcast. Say bye guys. Sayonara. Peace. Love you. That was crazy. Babe.